This is Andrew Stotts of A. Stotts Investment Research talking about our value model. In this case, I'm looking at the company TPC Power Holding, Public Company Limited in Thailand. First, a disclaimer. This example was created on the 23rd of January, 2017. What follows is not a valuation, forecast, rating, or recommendation. Rather, it's a teaching example. What follows is not investment advice. Rather, it's a teaching example. It is intended only as academic information to those, for those who want to learn about valuation. It should not be construed as the basis for any valuation or investment. The information in this presentation came from various sources, which we believe are reliable, though we do not guarantee the accuracy, adequacy, or completeness of such information. We hope you enjoy learning about valuation as much as we do. Okay, let's get into it. <clears throat> TPCH Power Holding Company Limited focuses on the electric on electricity generation and distribu distribution from biomass. It plans to expand to other renewable energy sources as well. TPCH has investments in seven main subsidiaries and holds majority stakes in six of them, all in Thailand. The company also provides supporting services to its subsidiaries. TPCH owns the largest biomass power plant group in Thailand. Its main revenue is dividends and servicing fees from shares in its subsidiaries, as well as income from providing supporting services to them. TPC8 sells and distributes the energy generated through PPAs, power purchase agreements, and similar contracts. Within two years, the company is set to start up a hydro power plant in Laos and two more biogas plants. So basically, this company is a holding company, but its only holdings are its subsidiary assets, which are the power plants. So this company, if we go forward, we can see that the operating capacity by plant, they've got the Mawong plant uh, energy, which is 8 megawatts, uh, Tung Sung green power at 9 megawatts, and Chang Rak bio power at 9 megawatts, and then Maha Chai green power at 8 megawatts. Next, we can see that the electricity sales is the main revenue coming in. Adder subsidy has to do with government and their uh, subsidy for the biomass. Now, let's talk about the forecast section. Look at this company and we can get a picture of what's going on here. The first thing is we can see that the growth in the company has started to get huge and will continue to be huge here because the growth because the company is expanding quite substantially with factories coming on with um, megawatts being available to sell so the growth in this company can be really strong in the next couple of years and then eventually start to slow so massive growth and right now the profit margin is getting up there and of course they're getting economies of scale as they add more facilities because the parent company is servicing all the subsidiaries so the overhead cost of the parent company can be spread over a wide and wider group of subsidiaries now let's talk about what's going on with the balance sheet and here we can see that growth in net fixed assets has been pretty massive it's going to slow down a bit and then it'll eventually slow down more as they get bigger they're still going to add but this is the main portion of the time when they were adding facilities and as a result of that, we can see that they're getting more and more revenue per asset in the future. If we look at this company's structure right now, it's got short-term borrowings that just jumped up to about 900, uh, 900 million baht, but their profitability is going to feed that. In addition, they've been issuing some long-term debt, and we expect that that will probably continue. The key thing here is that as they make more and more profit, that's going to drive up retained earnings, and that'll be part of how they finance this business. The dividend payout ratio, we're expecting at about 20, and then to increase 30, and then 35. And if we look at the cash flow, we can see the amount of CapEx has been pretty large here, and still a bit large, but starting to slow in our forecasts. 
And the result of that is that we've, they've been in a big investing period. When you compare that investing to the amount of operating cash flow, it's pretty low. But what we're going to see soon is that the operating cash flow at this point is going to cover the amount of investment based upon our projections. Of course, if they've got massive opportunities, it may be that they increase the amount of investment that they do at this time. But this gives you an idea of how a company moves from a negative free cash flow basis to a positive. Now, and of course, all that means is that the company can start paying out dividends, which we can see right here. So next, let's move into valuation. And let's look at what's happening with the EBIT and we'll call this net operating profit after taxes right here. It's very small. And then as the company ramps up, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually, the company will have to pay some taxes, but they're going to get a lot of tax holidays because of the fact that they're green energy. And if we see the amount of free cash flow to the firm, of course, free cash flow to the firm is investment related to CapEx and investment related to working capital. What we can see is that that free cash flow to the firm is very negative in these years, but eventually starts to get positive as they generate more and more NOPAT. Now, let's look at the invested capital in this business has been expanding. It's basically doubled over that period of time and eventually will grow but at a slower pace so doubling from here even it will take more than 2021 before they double their invested capital here so we can also see that the return on invested capital has started to rise and rise and should continue to be very strong in future years the thing to remember is that this business is a very stable business with government contracts if we look at the earnings per share it's been positive and now it's starting to jump and we're going to see that dividend payout ratio is rising and so since it is we're going to see that dividends per share go from nothing in this period of time to starting to grow very fast so we can see very fast growth there in dividends per share now let's look at the cost of capital well <clears throat> this company has over the years has been pretty volatile but the truth is is that this volatility should fall over time as its revenue streams come in and these are very steady revenue streams so we're gonna bring the beta down to 1.25 which gives us this is our market information for Thailand and that gives us a uh, required rate of return of 14 percent now the company finances itself about 80 percent of its capital structure as equity. So if we want to calculate the weighted average cost of capital with a debt level of 2.8 and a debt level of 5.0, it will rise over time as we can see. But the cost of equity is higher, of course, than the cost of capital. So we can see that here. Uh, <clears throat> So next, let's take a look at our terminal growth assumption, which is very conservative at number one. Now, it's conservative because think about most of the value of this company really is coming in the future period. So we have to be careful not to put too much value on that terminal value. Uh, because if we were to value the, the last or the next couple of years, the cash flow actually is pretty low, right? We went back, if we go backwards and we go back and we look at that free cash flow calculation, which was right here, we can see that free cash flow has actually been negative and is only starting to come up. So if we value only this discrete period right here, the value of this company is going to be tiny. Actually, this is part of the discrete period, right? So the value of this discrete period is going to be tiny. That means that a lot of value is put into the fade and the terminal period. So we have to be very careful when we're selecting the terminal growth rate here. And what we can see from this is that the multiples that we're valuing this company on at that terminal period is about uh, you know eight to nine times, which is pretty reasonable. So we can see here that we have a fade period that's about five years, and that fades down the NOPAT growth. And if we continue with those assumptions, what we can see is that uh, on a DDM basis, it's valued at about five, and on a free cash flow to the firm at about 12, and at a free cash flow to equity at about 18.
So what should be the actual value of this company? Well, that's a great question that actually we may not be able to perfectly answer in this, but let's go through some of the information and see. First thing we can see is free cash flow to the firm puts a lot of value on that terminal value. We can also look at it another way by saying that the present value of that cash flow in the discrete period, 21, 15, 10% right here. So free cash flow to equity is really strong, but it's putting all the value into the fade and into the terminal period here. So this gives us some idea of the way the company looks. And overall, um, it appears that the stock price is above at least these two and in line with this one. So is it cheap or expensive? That's the question that we're trying to answer. And let's go on to relative valuation. And we're going to say this company relative to the utility sector. The first thing we want to do is look at the PE ratio. And we can see that because the company's accelerating its growth so fast we can see right here earnings growth at 111 is that an exceptional item no that's real because the facilities are coming online so really if we look at this we're looking at pe to growth over a period of two years but the truth is is that the pe to growth ratio may be more reasonable if we look at it over three or four years something like that so at this point this company looks super super cheap now, if we go to the price to book, we got the same issue here. The ROE of the company is going from 3 to 7 to 12 to 22. So again, if we're going to take the average of these two years, we're going to appear that this company is overvalued relative to its peers in Thailand and Asia and globally. But the truth is, is that if we were to do that same ratio using only 2018, which is a very real number, we may find that this company is actually, that this bar may only come up to this point, right? And that would make it cheap relative to the others. So now if we just look at the sensitivity for a bit, what we can see here is that the sensitivity can be pretty high when we look at the gross margin a five percentage point change in gross margin can cause this jump in EPS growth. And what we can see on this side is that the value of the company could be 12 or it could be nine or it could be 16, depending on what's happening. We can also see that the, we can change the required rate of return to 14 to 15 or from 14 to 13, and that will have a small impact on the free cash flow valuation of the business. So there you have it. That is TPCH. And what you can see is that it's hard to, to value perfectly a company that's, that's putting new facilities into their business. But from this, you would say, well, it looks a little bit expensive. But if we were to look at the revenue and profits that are coming, it appears that maybe the company's cheap. What do you think? Leave a message and I'll see you soon.